in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all glory, Lord. Thank you for these beautiful children who have stopped what they were doing and they are here to listen to your word. Lord, I bless each one of them so their eyes may be opened, their spiritual eyes may be opened, the spiritual ears may be opened. And let that word flow into their heart. Let them have a better understanding of what you are going to speak today. Lord Jesus, you always love children. And they always came to you with so much love. I surrender each one of the child to you. You have big plans for them. And you have called them so they know you. And how they know you is through the word that you have given to us. Because your word is the way, the truth and the life. Your word is the beginning and the end. Your, life, your word is the truth. And the truth sets us free from everything. Father, make this teaching easy and simple for these children to understand. And once we are finished, help these children to practice, to think about what they have studied and to use it in their day-to-day -day basis. Lord, I bless their parents who encourage them Fill the parents' hearts with your love. Wherever they go, let them take you with them. For greater is you who is in them than everything that they face to raise these children. I thank you, Lord, and I know and I believe you heard my prayer. And I make this prayer in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Amen. 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 Praise, Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Okay. So today again we'll speak about faith. Okay. Now, do will anyone remember what we were talking about last time? We were talking about a woman. Come on. And you know, and we said hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing. And hearing, and we spoke <laughs> about hearing so many times. Yes. Remember, who did we speak about, Baba? Now, don't give me that look, quiet look. Who did oh, we speak one about? For twelve years. Oh, one for twelve years. Praise God. Excellent. Praise God. A woman who suffered. From this bleeding disorder for 12 years. She spent all her money, but nothing worked. One fine day, she heard about Jesus. And she said, I'm going to go now. So let's see what it says. What scripture was it, Baba? Do you remember Linston? <laughs> I think it was John. No, Mark, sister. Mark, Mark okay. 5, 25 to 34. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's go there. Jolton, you answer, Baba. Okay, if you don't answer, you don't know. If you don't answer, it doesn't get into your head. Even Joyma, ask questions and you answer. You talk, okay? Only Linston is the only one who is talking. Okay, so who's reading this? Okay, Linston, you can start, Baba. You can read. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. 
she had endured much under my physician many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better but rather grew worse uh, she had heard about jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak for she said if hmm, i but touch his clothes i will made well immediately a hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body about in the she, uh, she was healed for her disease immediately aware the power and gone for family peter turned about in the crowd and said who touched my clothes and his disciples said to him you see the crowd pressing in on you how can you say who touched me he looked all around to see who had done it but the woman knowing that knowing what had happened to her came in fear and trembling fell down before him and told him the whole truth he said to her daughter your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed of your disease praise god so here see we get everything in here what happened first this woman was suffering she couldn't see anything else but whatever she had she gave she spent every penny everything that she had she spent but did she get any results no she did she feel better no she did everything possible then one day she heard about jesus if i but touch his clothes i will be made well she said to herself she when she heard about jesus she said if i but touch his clothes i will be made well she believed she believed she believed what she thought the thought came to her she believed it i know and i know if i touch his cloak touch his hem i will be made well and then she did she must have been because people didn't want her in the crowd because she, they thought she was dirty so she must have been running 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 hiding 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 going this way going that way she must have come to jesus with that thought if only i touch him i will be well and he touched his clothes the moment he touched his clothes she was healed she was healed she could feel the, that she was healed and jesus felt the power leaving him as well jesus also felt the power going out of him he said who touched me and then the uh, the disciples said what are you asking us there are so many people here but then she came forward and she said it was me she was trembling in fear she knelt before him and she said it was me and she told him the truth but what did jesus say to her my daughter your money has healed you go and be happy is that what jesus said to her no what did the, what did jesus say to her i don't think you all are listening to me <laughs> what did jesus say to her go who and touch me who no no what did jesus say to her baba when she was healed and Not she was okay then made you well go in peace be healed of your disease very good jesus said daughter my son jesus is saying the same thing to us my son my little baby my daughter my precious child your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed of your disease my daughter 
my son, my precious, precious child. Your faith. Then we spoke. How do we get faith? How do we get faith? How do we, uh, how does faith get in us? By hearing and hearing yes. the word of God. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Well done, Winston. By hearing, hearing. She said it to herself. If only I touch his clothes, I will be made well. If only I touch his clothes, I will be made well. If only I touch his clothes, I will be made well. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing whatever you say. Word of God, whatever we study, every scripture is meant to be spoken. When we speak it, we hear it. We speak it, we hear it. And faith comes. If we don't speak it, we don't hear it. And then we say, oh, today I'm so sick. Today I'm getting a headache. I'm not going for my class. I don't want to go on that Zoom. So you're hearing. I'm not doing. I am not. I am not. You're hearing that. But if I say, I am better. I am well. I am going to listen to God's word. I am going to go and connect on Zoom. I am going to talk to the word. I am going to speak the word. I am going to listen to the word. The word already starts working faith inside you. My daughter, my son, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. How amazing is that? Your faith has made you well. So we have to focus. How do we build that faith? How do we get stronger in that faith? How? What do we do? We open our mouth and we speak God's word. Greater is the spirit who is inside me. Okay, let's do that, Baba. John, John, 1 John 4, 4. So, yes, Lord Jesus doesn't want you to be on your knees all day. He doesn't want you to hold your hands and beg. Jesus, give me this. Jesus, give me that. Jesus, give me an iPod. Jesus, give me iPad. Jesus, give me iPhone. Jesus, give me this. Ah, ah, ah. Jesus wants him to be inside you. Jesus wants you to feel the power inside you. Jesus wants you children to feel him inside you. Because he's nowhere outside. He dwells inside you. He dwells inside me. Go, Baba. Join, Ma. Little children, you are from God and have conquered them from the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Praise God. Here he says, little children. Even me, he calls little children. Even teacher Fatima, he calls little children. Even your mommy and daddy, my little children. Little children, you are from God. You are blessed. You are from God. You are not from this world. You are from God. No matter what you are facing, you have not conquered it. You have conquered the power of God because you are from God. For the one who is in you is greater than one who is in the world. 
we live in this world we see so many things in this world we see so many people hurting us we see so many friends hurting us they don't like us but listen to god's voice he says little children ah from god don't look at people who hurt you don't look at people who don't like you don't look at people what they say to you you belong to me and only me see on one little thing look how many how much we can talk little children you are from god you're not from this world but you are from god and god have conquered them you god's power is inside you see he says for the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world who's coming against you now the one who is in you inside you he is not up there he is not sideways he is not this way he is not that 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 way where is he where is the power of god where is the spirit of god come on children where does in the spirit of in our heart yes Come on, Joy Ma. What were you saying, Baba? In our hearts. Praise God. So He is inside you. That means who are you? You are a, caring. A child of you child are a child of God. You are a carrier of God. You are a carrier of God. What should I say now? I don't. I can't see anything here. Now, when that day I showed you, right? You put jewelry. Your mummy's gold and everything. Is it all over the place? What does mummy no. do? She puts it somewhere. She puts it in the box and in the cupboard and locks it. Isn't it? And otherwise she puts it in the bank where it's safe. Same way, the spirit of God is inside you. That's the treasure that God is saving inside you. God has put that holy spirit inside you. God has put that treasure inside you. So who are you? You are the wealthiest person in the whole world. No matter what comes. You have the power of God inside you. No matter who comes and punches you on the face. You still got the Lord inside you. he will tell you no no jolton you don't give him back you come to me you think about me i didn't tell you to punch him i told you to love him so what does jolton think i've got my holy spirit inside me i've got the power of god inside me. my god loves me my jesus loves me. and jesus calls me his beloved child oh joyma's friend says oh joyma you don't look nice i am so beautiful i dress so well i put good clothes my dad buys this for me my dad buys that for me but look at you but what does jesus say joyma i created you i made you so beautiful i made you so wonderful and guess what you don't have to wear pretty clothes to make yourself beautiful you've got pretty me inside you so the holy spirit who's inside you is pretty winston goes to school and the children the friends will say eh, you're not good at this you're not good at that i can do better Winston doesn't have to worry because the holy spirit is inside her inside you 
You just have to say, thank you, Jesus. I know you love me. I know you love me. And no matter what people say to me, I bless them. Because you said to love them. And remember, my dear children, you are created perfect. It doesn't matter if you can't hear. It doesn't matter you can't speak. It doesn't matter you can't dance. It doesn't matter. What matters is who is inside you. And he is God. God dwells inside you. God is not deaf. God is not dumb. God is the most high God. His Holy Spirit dwells inside us. He gives us the power and the strength. He makes us children of God. But when someone comes and tells you all those wrong things, they are lies from the devil. You should not entertain them. Focus. Change your focus. Change your focus. If someone says, Again and again, that person is coming and telling you. Again and again, you say, I am good. My God is good. The Holy Spirit dwells inside me. My Jesus loves me. I am the light of the world. You have to speak. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. You hear, you hear what you speak. So if you don't speak, the devil will come and bash you and bash you and bash you. When you speak, he can't stand the word of God. Remember even Jesus said to him, it is written. And he had to run away. When he knows what you are talking about, he can't stand the word of God. You know? So remember children, beloved children of God. The Holy Spirit dwells inside you. It is not, he is not the one you have to look for. You don't have to go looking for him. You don't have to go praying for him. You just have to speak to him. Holy Spirit, I need help. Holy Spirit, I feel weak. Holy Spirit, I don't know what to do. Holy Spirit, help me. You have to speak. You have to speak so you can hear and hear and hear the voice of God. And Jesus, in the end, what does he say? My daughter, my son, my beloved, your faith has healed you. Okay, put John Baba, John 6. So we also said, I'm sure we, we did this as well. Remember that boy who had two fish and five loaves? We spoke about him, right? Long time ago we did. We didn't speak yes. about him last Sunday. <clears throat> we spoke about that small boy. And he is just like you all. He would be just like you all. He would be small. If mommy packs you the lunch and gives won't you be hungry and you will look after that lunch because you have to eat that lunch and you are so hungry and you don't want anyone to steal that lunch because everyone is going after Jesus would be hungry. They would be tired. They needed something to eat. They needed water. They need to drink. But Jesus was giving them spiritual food. So then Jesus had an idea. He thought, let's check these people. Go and give them some food. And what did the disciples think? What are you talking about? A whole month's salary, we can't uh, feed these people. Jesus, did you see how many people are here? But Jesus was testing them. Then, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy who has 
five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Five barley loaves and two fish. And what did Jesus say? Make the people sit down. Make the people. Jesus did not show any reaction because Jesus knew what he was going to do. So he made them. And what did Jesus do, my dear children? He took the bread. What did he do? Then Jesus took the loaves and when he gave thanks, he first gave thanks. He took the two loaves, two fish and five loaves and gave thanks to the Father. He gave thanks and he distributed it. And they had plenty. Now, that boy is a small boy like you. But what did he do? Can you all tell me what he did? Come on. What did that small boy like you do? Let's see what you what comes to your mind. What did the small boy do? He shared whatever he had. Exactly, Linston. What do you think, Jolton? Jaima, what do you think, Baba? What did that small boy do? We have to share whatever we have. Yes. So... That boy was selfish. Very good answers. Very good answers. Perfect answers. The boy did not think twice. He knew everyone else was hungry. So Jesus used him to give. He gave. He didn't throw. He gave. He took from his bag. He gave in the hands of Jesus. He gave with love. He shared. He gave his offering. And what did Jesus do? He thanked God. He thanked the Father. When you give something to someone, that person who receives it thanks the Father. Thank you, Jesus. You send an angel in my life. You don't have a shirt for Christmas? That's okay. Someone doesn't have anything. You don't have New Year's for Christmas? That's okay. That boy on the street doesn't have anything. He hasn't even eaten. So, my dear children, bless your families by giving. Giving, and Jesus will give you abundant. Not only you, because of you, your families are blessed. Because of you, your school is blessed. Wherever you go, you take God's favor with you. So Jesus took what the boy gave. The boy gave. Jesus received. Jesus multiplied it. So God calls you now. Jesus has called you here to give. What are you giving? What is your two fish and five loaves? That is your time. You could watch there. You could sit there and watch TV. You could play video game. You could get on your phone. You could do so many things that devil tempts you. But you choose to give your time. You chose to give your years, your mind, your body, your soul to listen. When you listen, what does Jesus give you? He gives you wisdom. He gives you love. Gives you joy. He wants, he, he comes and dwells inside you. Gives you love.
and that's your two fish and five loaves. Children don't say, oh, what are we going on that uh, Zoom and doing? What are we doing here? Mommy, I'm not going. What are you doing here? You are listening and listening. You are hearing and hearing. And when you are hearing, you are getting the understanding. You are knowing Jesus. You are knowing what is written. You are growing in the love of God. You are filling your heart with the love of God. You are giving nothing, just an hour or so. Out of 24 hours, you are just giving a little bit. But what is Jesus doing? He's transforming you. He's making you beautiful. He's filling you with his love. He's filling you with the knowledge. And what happens? When you are in big trouble, when your mommy is in big trouble, when your daddy is in big trouble, when they are sick, when they can't afford something, what do you do? You learn to think about what you heard. My Jesus dwells inside me. My Jesus will never give me any lack. My Jesus will never make me or my family suffer. My Jesus is great. My Jesus walks with me, talks with me. He, he changes everything through me. Why? How? Because Jesus said, you are the light of the world. So you carry that light inside you. So my dear children, if someone tells you, hey, it's so dark. What happens? Jesus said, I made you like a masterpiece. Jesus said, you are the light. But I wanted you to be dark because otherwise you won't be so gorgeous. You won't be so beautiful. But inside you is the most perfect, bright, shining light. And someone comes and says, Oh, look, your mommy can't afford this. But I, my mommy can afford this much. What did Jesus say to you? Jesus said, I am greater inside me. I will make sure you get every need. I will meet every need. You are the light. So there will be no darkness. There will be no sadness. But who do we go seeking? We have to know the word God. We have to know the love of God. We have to know we are the children of God. We are not the children of mommy and daddy. We are the gifts given to mommy and daddy. God blessed us with you. We are the blessings given to mommy and daddy. But God is our creator. He gave Linston to mommy and daddy. He gave Joyma to mommy and daddy. He didn't give Joyma to me. He created special parents for Joyma. He's created special parents for Jolton. But then Jesus said, you better teach my children my word. You better go. Take sister, teacher Fatima, take teacher Nati and tell my children about me. So now what you have to do? You go and tell your friends about Jesus. Say, come on, let's go and listen to the word. Let's go and listen about Jesus. So what you're doing, what I'm doing to you, you're doing to other friends. You're going and talking to your friends about Jesus. So what you're doing, just what that boy did. Just what that boy did. What gift is given to you, you're going and sharing the gift with others. You're going and talking about it. As you talk about it, 
Jesus multiplies the gift inside you. Jesus uses you as a preacher. Jesus uses his power inside you. Jesus works wonders through you. Because, you know, children, when they grow, they, want, they don't want to hear about Jesus. But they want to see why Joyma is always so happy. They want to see, even if Winston is not well, how can he study? They want to see, even if Jolton is so weak, how can he play? Because the power of God is inside you. My dear children, don't forget that. Power of God is not ordinary. Phew, if I do, you won't fall. But with the power of God, knowing who you are doing, anything coming against you, if you do, phew, gone. Because you're doing everything in the name of Jesus. Everything. You take the name of Jesus. You forget the word of God, you say Jesus. I don't know what to say. But I know your name has power. Jesus, I don't know what to do. But I know that your name has power. Just take the name of Jesus. And the light will never fail you. You know? So remember, just what that boy did. See how nice the Holy Spirit is. He reminded me of that. Just what that boy did, God has put that gift inside you. He gave the fish and the loaves for the people to survive and listen to God's word. So God has given you the wisdom. You heard the word of God. When you go to school in the morning, you tell them, you know, I, I go and listen to the word of God. And it helps my life. It builds me up. I can see the light and my life changes. Do you want to come and join? And you call to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm doing my bit. You do your bit. I'm going and telling them, you help me. And you know, my dear children, Baby, just put this Baba, uh, Jeremiah 1.5. You know, my dear children, we read this scripture before. And who did Jesus say you are? Who did he call us, all of us? Come on, you know that. Before you were born, I knew you. What did Jesus say? Come on, who's reading this? Jolton, you read Baba, go come. Before I formed you in the womb, I slowly, knew you. Slowly, 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 word by word. Before I formed you, like that. In the womb. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I constructed you. I appointed you. You are a prophet to the nations. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I made you holy. I made you special. I made you wonderful. Consecrated you. I made you holy. And I appointed you. What did he appoint you? Not a big manager. Not an officer. Not a class monitor. Not a captain. I appointed you as my prophet. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. You are a prophet in within yourself. You are a prophet in your house. You are a prophet in your neighborhood. You are a prophet when you go to school. You are a prophet in the bus. You are a prophet in the train. You are a prophet, most high prophet, in the school. That's where you spend most of your time. So walk like a prophet. Think like a prophet. Talk like a prophet. Run like a prophet. 
every word that comes out of your mouth, let it be the word of a prophet. But if you don't know about it, how are you going to speak about it? If you don't know who dwells inside you, how will it make you walk like a prophet? If someone says, hey, what is this? If someone says you are an idiot, what are you going to say? You are mad. But if you know you are a prophet, what are you going to say? God bless you. Jesus loves you. This is how prophets speak. That's why I say, how are you? I am blessed. Prophet speaks like that. Like a beautiful Joyma said, I've got cold, but I'm blessed. Yeah, I've got cold, but I say, Satan, get out of me. Remember last week, I couldn't talk. My, my throat was bad. I said, Satan, you came to me. It's okay. You can't do this all the time. You know? So, I got cold. Get out of me. Jesus didn't say. Jesus said, your faith has healed you. So, you have to keep listening. Keep listening. Don't say, I got cold. Oh, I got cold today. I don't feel well today. Ah, 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 ah. You know you got cold. And you know Jesus said, I have healed you. My daughter. My daughter. Son, I love you. You are the light of the world. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. Hear that word all the time. Jesus appointed me prophet. Jesus appointed me prophet. Jesus appointed me, made me a prophet. I am a prophet. I am a prophet. Say that to yourself. Don't say wrong things. Don't use wrong words. Think before you speak. So that means you speak less. You listen more. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. So you speak one word. Jesus loves me. I am an appointed prophet. I am a prophet. You are listening that you are a prophet. Walk like a prophet, talk like a prophet, run like a prophet, and live like a prophet. How do you live like a prophet? Because greater is he who is inside you than everything that comes against you. No matter what, you listen to God's word, every time there will be a test. Every time that word will be tested. Every time your faith will be tested. That poor lady, she spent so much money. But people were condemning her. People were hating her, hurting her. She was embarrassed. But she heard and she heard and she heard. And then she left. She went. Why? Because she felt like a prophet. She felt like a princess. She felt stronger. If only I touch his hand, I'm going to be well. And Jesus said, My daughter, your faith has healed you. Faith is something supernatural. Faith is something very beautiful. And faith is something you can't borrow. You can't take it from mommy. You can't take it from daddy. You can't take it from me. You can't take it from teacher Fatima. You can't take it from teacher Neti. Faith is something you create. You create it inside you. You feel who you are. You feel the power of God inside you. You create that love inside you. Just me and Jesus. And Jesus loves you, my dear children. 
There's no one. See, to look after the children, parents have to go through a lot of trials. Parents have to make sure all their children are okay. The children study in good schools. They have to pay for their tuitions. They have to look after the whole household, make sure there's enough food, make sure there's enough clothing, make sure they, there's enough of everything. So they have to go through hardships. But children like you, who carry the power of God, can support them. Mommy, this is what the word of God says. So what you are doing, you are teaching your parents the love of God. Today I studied this in class. Go and tell your parents about it. Because not all parents make that time to come and sit here and listen. Because there are other siblings too. So you go and say, today I heard about the lady who had bleeding disorder. Today I heard about that boy who selflessly gave everything that he had. And make up your mind. I will also give two fishes and five loaves, which God has given me. Whatever you have is God's gift. You can speak well. You can smile well. You can write well. You can talk. You can just walk well. It's a gift. And that gift is to be used and multiplied. So make up your mind. Jesus, today itself, you call me a prophet? I want to live like a prophet, love like a prophet, talk like a prophet. When I go to school tomorrow, Jesus, I want you to show me who I'm going to talk to. Whose life I'm going to touch. Who do you want me to talk about you? And you see, when you're sitting there, one friend will say, Oh, today this thing happened, that thing happened. Then you say, do you want to come for the class? You tell them about Jesus. I feel so much better. You are a testimony. You are a living testimony. Say, my life has changed, but I'm sure your life has changed. I'm sure you listen to the word once, your life changes. So then you become a testimony. You go and take that message. You prophecy, you talk. When you are a prophet, you prophecy. You speak. What, then what do you do? You build the faith. You create faith into people's life. You teach them to believe in what Jesus did for us. You teach them, even though you don't see Jesus, you, you teach them to believe what you don't see. Believe health. Believe uh, good results. Believe prosperity. Believe wealth. Believe in everything what Jesus has called you to believe. What Jesus has done for you. Because Jesus loves you, my dear children. Doesn't matter how many of us are there, even if we are one. Jesus speaks through, to that child. You must never be discouraged. You must never say, no one is coming for this class. No one is coming. Then Jesus will ask you, how many people did you call? Who did you go and tell about me? How will the children come? I called you as a prophet. I anointed you as a prophet. I appointed you as a prophet. Are you working for my kingdom? Are you doing what I want you to do? So you have to answer to Jesus then. But the moment you say, Jesus, great are you who is inside me. You show me what I should do. Through you, you see the blessings. Abundant blessings in every person you come across. 
in your teacher, in your principal, in your whole school. That school will have favors. As you walk, you see blessings going through. You see God's favor because of you. Because you are appointed prophet. You are appointed to create faith in people's life. You are appointed to talk about Jesus so people can hear his voice. Praise God. Do you all believe that? Do you all believe that or what? Yes. Praise yes. God. See? Yes. Only, only teacher Fatima believes it. Do you all believe that, children? Yes. Oh, have you fallen asleep? Yes. Thank you, Linston. Thank you, Jesus. Have you fallen asleep, Joy Manjolkin? Behind oh, the sky. No. Hey? What did you say, Baba? Jolton, what did you say? I can't hear you all. What did you all say, Joyma and Jolton? Did you all believe it? Do you believe it? Yes, sister. Yes. What about you, Jolton? Do you believe Jesus loves you? Do you believe, you believe you are a prophet? Yeah? You know what? If I suppose I got glasses, if I fall asleep like that, you will know, right? Yes. Fall asleep, I will not know. And why I'm saying I don't know, that enemy will say, what are you listening? He's so boring. Why are you listening to her? That doesn't have anything to do. Come on, it's okay, she can't see you. You better go sleep. Ha ha. Hearing? And hearing. What are you hearing? And you must say, no, 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 no. Get out. You have no place in me. Greater is he who is in me. Out. What's Retu? <laughs> Jesus, help me. Out of the sleep. So, you see. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Okay, any questions you'll have? No, sister. Praise God. And thank you for reading the Bible beautifully, all the children. You know, Jolton, Jaima, God's word, you must be very careful when you read that word. You must read it slowly. Jesus is the way. Jesus has appointed you, word by word. So you hear that. It's very powerful, you know, because that word is alive. We read that. The word is made flesh and dwells among us. So praise God. Praise. So anything you want to ask? Anything you want to say? Is that helping you all? Does that help you? Yes. Praise God. Yes. Okay, praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Baba Fatima. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we had in your presence, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful children, Lord, who are teachable, Lord. Yes, and they are here to seek you first, Lord. As your word says, seek first the kingdom of God and rest everything shall be added unto you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Your word, which is alive and active, Lord. Yes, Lord. As you spoke today, Lord, you, as your word says, Lord, that faith comes by hearing and hearing God's word. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that all things are possible for us through faith in your word, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we bless these children. They are the head and not the tail. They are always at the top and not at the bottom, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your presence goes with them and they are at rest, Lord. Yes. 
And Lord, we believe, Lord, that all that they have received here, Lord, they have received it with understanding, Lord. Yes, Lord. And they are just not the hearers of your word, word but they are the doers of your word, Lord. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Praise